Alex Hanser here. It is September 14th in the year 2017, coming to you from Southwest Colorado. In this week's edition of Outside the Box, which is also going to be exclusively available on demand, not on YouTube, I'm going to be discussing the snapshots, the highlights of a lifetime of experience that's taught me about psychic protection, psychic attack, spiritual warfare, and the things that I've learned since becoming a public speaker. You know, some of the basics with regards to such protecting your psyche from spiritual attack is knowing, right, what your enemy or those attacking you, uh, what they're working with. And so people in some of the books and whatnot that I've read over the years, and many of them written about the subject before the modern day of the internet. So I'm going to tell you right now, when you become a YouTuber, and there's a number of things that you're discussing that are controversial, if some of those things and some of those topics are right on the money, and some of the things that I'm warning you about have warned you about, think about what I've said geopolitically, about what I think is coming on the horizon in the early 2020s leading into the mid-2020s on the west coast of the United States, the threat to women's safety, a nation potentially under occupation. In this generation that we are living in, I'm also a pioneer in discussing the effects of the solar flares on human consciousness, earth changes, earthquakes, weather patterns. Look at the events that we're seeing right here, not to discount the potential of other influences over the climate or weather weapons but I think a lot of people have overlooked the effect of the Sun on our world human behavior so we talk about Alexander Chavinsky being thrown in the gulags in 1942 by Lenin we have a history of persecution of not only Gnostics genuine political independent thinkers real spiritualists outside of religion but also people that have um, done amazing work on our planet. Scientific breakthroughs that for whatever reason was punished by their society. So I'm going to be talking about some of my experiences. I'm going to be talking about being born in Portland, Oregon in 1980 and feeling that that was not by accident. That the parents that I had the early childhood experiences and traumas, also not by accident. It's also not by accident that certain people feel that it's their duty to exploit what they believe is someone else's weakness. Now, you've heard the expression, kindness is often misconstrued for weakness. So is showing emotion. So is showing your pain. We're talking about your childhood. And since I came off grid, I've been processing a lot in this last year. I've been discussing elements of my childhood. I've been discussing what it's like to be the only figure in the independent media with genetics from Afghanistan, but not an Afghan myself in sense of nationalism, but someone that was born in Portland, Oregon, son of an Oregonian woman or Caucasian woman. And then my father from Afghanistan, they met in the late 1970s. And I've been trying to explain as calmly as possible, sometimes not so much, that to be the only person, right, with genetics from that part of the world in the independent media while also presenting certain warnings that my more Anglo counterparts in the alternative media and also those on the left that would call themselves progressive, super progressive, super Democrat, super American in their own way. I know that the things that I've discussed, whether we talk about the solar influence over human consciousness or people scoffing at the off-grid information that I've shared with you or my geopolitical warnings, or as we'll get into the, the meat of it, the topic of psychic attack and the idea that we many of us here spiritual view not religious our souls inside human bodies going through a massive shift in human expression human reality physical reality 
and there's something going on with these solar cycles, eclipses, full moons, and other events that seem to be thinning our world to a certain degree. Thinning the barrier between our world and others. You will also notice for those of you that are actually familiar with my work and what I've said about these spiritual parasites in a way that many of your churches, your mosques, and your channelers have not. Many of the entities that people in the society think can be trusted, the archangels, other entities that people are channeling, sometimes when the pastor thinks they're talking to God, the question is, are they really talking to God? And the question is, if an atheist, be it in Portland, Oregon, or someone else, is going to step on my views and say they have no merit, how are they not also thinking with a religious mind? By rushing to a judgment to label something negative or of the devil. But they may not say of the devil, they'll speak in a different language. I'm progressive, I'm scientific, you're dabbling in theories that have no weight. Who's to say that ethnocentric attitudes still held in our society our conscious way to go about looking at reality. It isn't until people arrest their own ethnocentric nature and the atheistic, arrogant attitude of our culture that says that spirit doesn't exist is in and of itself a religion to a certain degree. To another degree, materialism becomes a religion, if not scientism. And of course, when we talk about science, we could talk about climate change, for example. The sun has an influence over climate change. It's not just what people think. But if people are going to develop, right, a religious zeal upon their scientific understanding, they will edit out new scientific information that goes contrary to what they previously believed. So, I call this show Outside the Box from the beginning. Why? Because my interest, you think about like the spectrum of the rainbow, it's not limited to just whatever the show started with. 9-11 and the truth behind that was a core part of it. It was rejected by many people that didn't seem to feel the same level of empathy as I towards those that have been blamed for that day. So early on, people could have asked themselves, What's legitimate about what we've been told, not only a strong country being attacked by supposedly a country that really isn't a country anymore, Taliban, not really a government, but terrorist organization funded by the ISI with links to the CIA, mind you. And I'm asking myself early on, how do people not understand this is spiritual warfare? Yeah, planes going to the buildings, now millions dead. Even if you believe what they told you about 9-11, think about the logic in how many years later you have Tom Hartman trying to speak to your consciousness. You have others on the left that would also step on 9-11 truth that are still conscious enough to say, even with the official story, but the official story, you have to remember, included Saudis. It wasn't really Afghanis. So the whole official story itself is suspicious and strange to only see Afghanistan exploited, but not just for the drugs, for the spilling of blood. And this is something that your unprogressive society is not yet able to understand. Evil exists, and I stand against that evil. And in many cases, I stand alone in your world. I stand alone in your world as I speak about the millions dead. And I found myself a target to a certain degree. Now, a lot of people don't understand what I mean by that. 